So I was asked by a beekeeper from the Sacramento Area Beekeepers Association uh, to come speak uh, down to his beekeepers in uh, Sacramento. And I said no. Um, because I'm busy. This is a busy time of year. Uh, so he said, well, how about you? Um, why don't you broadcast yourself live over, over the internet? And uh, we'll put you up in front of the crew and you can talk bees and let's do it this way. And I said, well, I don't know anything about this. So I'll have to check it out. So I uh, got an email from him this morning. He said, uh, the 19th's coming up. What do you think? And I was like, oh, geez, I forgot. I completely forgot everything about this. Uh, let me uh, dig up, you know, Google hang out, Hangout or something and try to figure it out and see what it come up with. Uh, so I went and I spent a little bit of time today just kind of exploring Google Hangout and trying to figure out how it works and upload my presentation. And I think I got it figured out and simple enough. So on March 19th, I think I'm going to be presenting about beekeeping uh, to the Sacramento Area Beekeepers Association, 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, and as I was just work, running through here, putting up my presentation, I just run through a... Uh, a uh, slide here I wanted to show you. So this is a bee longevity spreadsheet that a uh, local beekeeper around here named Lloyd Harris had developed back in 1976-1977. So what it is is a data set that Lloyd had collected throughout a couple summers which shows, uh, which measures the amount of brood and corresponds it to the seasonal adult population and it predicts the hive population throughout the year according to the uh, the bees lifespan and i find this extremely fascinating because he's put it together in a spreadsheet all this data all these numbers and values and estimates and all this stuff he's put together into a spreadsheet which displays itself nice and neat and tidy within two little graphs here and the neat thing about this spreadsheet is he's made it so you can adjust the brood to adjust it to what you're seeing within your operation. This data had been used. Randy Oliver had grabbed hold of his data set and put it all together in this nice, neat, tidy little graph here, as you can see. I refer back to this all the time. This graph is used by beekeepers all around the world. It shows uh, your brood line all through the year corresponding to the, uh, the population within the hive. And it shows the age of the bee throughout the season. All in a graph, all nice and neat and tidy, easy to see, easy to read. And what I like about this is, is for us northern beekeepers, we can take this uh, graph and we can transpose our seasonal management over top of it, which kind of helps us understand what dynamics are going on within the colony at certain times that we're manipulating these hives, and just helps us understand what's going on and maybe predict a little bit better and manage accordingly. So anyways, with Lloyd's uh, spreadsheet here, I thought I'd plug in a few numbers which uh, represent my apiary right now. This last fall I figured my hives had gone into winter um, small. I, my winter nest developed itself early in fall and uh, I think they just set themselves up a little bit soon and I'm afraid they're going to time out before spring comes. So what I want to do is through Lloyd's graph here, I just want to plug in some values that would represent my apiary as it went into fall here. So I'm just going to change some values along his column here. So we're looking at July. These figures here represent a brood on a grid. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how many cells of brood these numbers represent, but we'll just take them as, um, as a unit of value for the amount of brood within the colony. So as you can see through spring, it starts at 233, 
and the grid is showing us it increases up to July at 728. So there's an increase of brood, a substan substantial amount of increase, and then tapering down into fall here. So let's say my apiary is maxed out at 728. Um, middle of July, I'd say it'd be about the same, kicking out at 700. I'd say like that. And then going into August here, these guys are doing very well still. So these guys are kicking out a lot of brood. Uh, right, so that kind of represents a massive uh, summer population uh, going into fall. Um, August 20th, I'd say I was finding sheets and sheets of brood. So I would say, easy say 700 uh, would represent that mid-August, which shows my uh, winter nest being established there. But going into September 1st, let's say, yeah, I could keep it at 280 because I was really uh, lacking, let's say 250 even. Whoops. And I was going and, and these hives were shut out for brood after that completely. So this is what my seasonal adult population looks like. This massive summer population. I run out of nectar here, which is too bad because I've had all these bees to be able to collect this monster crop. So these guys fell short, hungry. I built my uh, uh, winter nest here. And as you can see, this is what my winter nest looks like going in a little bit small, but but what this is showing is it shows a very steady, consistent winter nest is what I'm seeing inside the shed here. Um, we're going to end up here at uh, April 29th will be the flip over there. So what I want to look at here is this late winter brood nest that's going on. So this is my brood, this is my winter nest going in. And I'm just going to erase the winter brood nest is happening. Let's see what happens here. So by looking at this graph, I'm looking at taking all the win the, uh, the late mid to late winter season brood rearing. There isn't a lot that was going on there according to Lloyd's uh, measurements, uh, but enough that you'll see that the the, this winter nest without that brood rearing has completely dropped off to dead. So as I see it, as I read my nest going into winter, uh, small but adequate, but without all this late season brood rearing, these guys are going to die. We're going to get them out April, this is April 29th. Let's back it up. We're going to get them out on the 17th here. But they're dead. We run out of time. We run out of time. We have to get them out uh, end of March to be able to salvage any kind of population rejuvenation. So let's back this right up to represent our mid-season winter brood nest. And if things are coming along as they should within that shed, this graph, according to Lloyd's uh, brood measurement calculations, these guys should make it till spring. If we get them out April 5th, which I'm hoping, so let's say we get, here Lloyd got them out uh, April 29th. You can see the increase of brood rearing here. So if we get them out sooner, increase that brood rearing, uh, much sooner. <coughs> These guys should be able to wrap themselves into spring, um, so into May, into terrific shape. So this is telling me there is some hope. As long as these colonies are brooding within my shed right now, let's pretend my colonies brooded a little bit later. Let's make 250 uh, middle of September the end of September 
showing a substantial increase in colony size and um, these guys turn over a lot more productively and a lot more efficiently. They didn't. The latest they could possibly rear brood for me, would, unless they put 100 rally in there. So I'm following the trend line. So according to um, all the dynamics that are working within that um, within that winter nest right now, I have set up an adequate winter nest, and as long as these colonies follow through with midwinter brood rearing, it's not a lot as you can see. There's just a little bit. There's enough um, brood rearing going on to replenish the the winter nest within this colony um, to the point where it sustains its 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 maintenance to the point in where we can get them out in winter and grow them out. So I'm curious to, you know, get into the hives and, and dig down into one just to see if, in fact, these colonies are exhibiting a little bit of brood uh, throughout the winter. Because if they are, then I have nothing to worry about. That means I, I got them far, I'll get them far enough to be able to turn them over into a springtime nest. If not, because they went in with very little pollen stores, I'm looking at certain death. So these are extremely interesting dynamics that I've, I've been looking at this graph and, and kind of playing around with the values and what what my hives look like and what they could be doing and what might happen and, and all these different scenarios just to help me understand what's going on within this winter nest right now. So I've been playing around with the graph a little bit just to see what different scenarios will present itself and I'm looking at uh, my brood nest here in the fall. Okay and I'm looking at right about this time you know before they start setting up this winter nest I'm looking at this point in time where all the summer population just kind of lingers here and without a summer flow these guys are just wasted bees just consuming resources for no reason. So what if we take these bees, take like eight or ten thousand of these bees, dump them into a nuke, drop a, a queen in them and let's see what happens here. So I'm just going to zero out the, uh, the this nest. So this rip, so here we go. So the summer population without any uh, winter nests being established, they, they zero, they, they die right off by the end of November into December. So what if we take these bees, let's say there's 10,000 bees in here, we drop a queen in there, so she's laying September 1st and she lays an equivalent of like 500. She's a little vig vigorous queen, but she just gets one round of brood in before we had to pack it up full of honey uh, to get them through winter. So what does that do? That brings this nest to a small but steady winter cluster that kind of drifts all the way through to the point where in spring where they make that flip over, it practically becomes the same size as this other adequate nest coming through winter. Extremely fascinating. Um, and it all has to do with this late winter season brood rearing that turnover of bees very slow turnover, slow steady turnover of bees that replace the attrition that's going on within that colony. So that attrition that those bees are drifting off and whatever service they provide that colony before they die off, I'm not sure. But what's happening is they're bringing in these new bees to replace them just to hold that colony size static, keep their population threshold adequate. And that queen then, in the spring, will be much the same because she's vigorous, she's a brand new queen in there, she established a terrific brood nest back in September. She hits it hard as soon as they get outside and she redevelops that nest into spring and off she goes. Much the same as this other colony here. So that is really cool. It maybe makes you think a little bit about uh, how we're managing these colonies and how we can maybe um, 
adapt our management from uh, season to season or from year to year. Um, there are some years that we're going to get a honey crop all the way through August and then into September we set them up for winter which is great but years like last year where I had a um, my honey flow cut short and they were robbing beginning of August and all that mass of bees in those boxes were just sitting there eating resources they weren't doing anything they weren't producing brood they weren't collecting honey they're just there uh, being there and if I could maybe have taken those bees at that time and dropped them in a nuke and you know put a new queen in there fresh queen in there to get at least one or two rounds of brood to just to, just enough to establish the integrity of that winter nest maybe um, maybe I could have made better use of those resources so just something to think about um, I was just playing around with this uh, Google Hangout program, uh, just trying to get the feel of it so when I'm presenting this in front of the Sacramento Area Beekeepers Association, I know how to navigate through and present my presentation and, you know, bring up this graph and, you know, do a little bit of interaction throughout my presentation. So, you know, just a few thoughts here on, uh, you know, some very interesting work conducted earlier on Basically, absolutely everything we do as a beekeeper, uh, bee longevity, uh, how the bees uh, set themselves up for winter, and how they flip them, uh, how they manage their all the dynamics that go on within that colony uh, throughout the winter to be able to get them to spring in a sustainable, predictable way, and then flip it and grow it up into summer again. There's so much going on in here that this is the kind of information that we can then take. And the more we understand what's going on, the better we can adapt to the year to year and exploit these bees to be able to bring out the absolute brilliance so that they bring in the revenue and make us a tremendous amount of money.